Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, A Bridge to the Future Ernst Ludwig Kirchner was a German artist and one of the major figures of Expressionism in the 20th century. An enigmatic, one could say almost tortured figure in modern art, he paved the way for a new understanding in art, the unification of art and life, with vibrant, bold paintings that shimmered with life. A victim of the Nazis and their inhumane, degenerate art exhibition in the late 1930s, Kirchner strove for a new art and a new kind of culture during one of the most turbulent eras of human history. A founder of the expressionist group The Bridge, his story ended in tragedy in 1938 when he shot himself in front of his home in Frauenkirch. His story in many ways is the story of modernism in the 20th century, turbulent and bombastic. Let's explore what made Kirchner such an important figure in the development of Expressionism in art, as well as such a seminal figure in modern culture, both of German art and the world. It seems as though the goal of my work has always been to dissolve myself completely into the sensations of the surroundings in order to then integrate this into a coherent, painterly form. All art needs this visible world and will always need it. Kirchner's Early Life and the Bridge Kirchner was born on May 6, 1880 in Auschenberg, Bavaria and studied architecture at Dresden Technical High School in 1901, where he became close friends with Fritz Bley. They shared similar passions and views on art and nature, and Kirchner made the decision to dedicate himself to fine art instead of architecture. In 1905, he and a group of artists and intellectuals such as Karl Schmidt Rutloff and Eric Heckel formed the group Die Brücke, the bridge, in pursuit of a new style of painting which went beyond the formal academic style. Their aim was to create a bridge between these older formalist modes of expression to create a new and novel aesthetic, a bridge between the old art and the new. The style of Die Brücke was to express extremes of emotion through jarring lines and colours. The group met at an old butcher's shop, which also served as Kirchner's studio for practising figure drawing. In 1906, the bridge put on their first group show in a lamp factory with a display of the group's radical new modes of expression, with the nude often a central motif. These, beho these bohemians of the new wanted to practice, live and produce art. The City The bridge disbanded in 1913 with Kirchner's publication of Chronique de Bruck, Brucker Chronicle, which began Kirchner's development as an artist. He began to focus on street scenes and on the increasing industrialization of Germany through the, throughout this period, exploring the highs and low lives of modern Berlin, itself a blossoming metropolis, often portraying Berlin's sex workers prowling the streets like banshees of the night. This period marked a period of transition as he moved away from the nude, which had dominated his early work, to portraying the dynamism and speed of the modern world through the lens of Berlin. The Army and Nervous Breakdown A pivotal moment in Kirchner's life occurred when he joined the military voluntarily, but the life of the army did not seem to suit his sensibilities and he suffered an acute nervous breakdown, illustrating all its agony in the famous work Self-Portrait as a Soldier, a work often described as a work of self-castration, where he portrays himself dark-eyed and with a missing hand. The main tool of his creativity, his hands, being severed in the savage expressionist painting. His experience would not break him entirely, however, and as the years progressed, his reputation as a leading German expressionist continued to grow with exhibitions in Switzerland and Germany in the 1920s. In 1931, he became a member of the Prussian Academy of Arts. Letter from Konstam, Kirchner's doctor, to Austhaus. Apart from general constitutional weakness, Mr. Kirchner is suffering from nervous ex excitation in which insomnia and abusive sleep-inducing drugs play a dominant role. His excitation is constantly nourished by the memory of his period of military service and everything that's associated with it. He intends to return to us in June, which would be the best thing for him, within the limits of his pathological predisposition. A cure, a cure or at least a impro great improvement, is possible. The Degenerate Artist The 1930s, however, were not proved to be a good decade for Kirchner, as the Nazis rising to power decried him as a degenerate artist. Forcing him to resign from the Berlin Academy of Arts, hundreds of his work were destroyed by the fascists in their blind quest for the purification of art. And Kirchner once again found himself in despair. 
seeing his life's work being destroyed and sullied in the name of Nazi ideology. He even destroyed some of his own work before finally his tragic suicide in 1938. A letter from Erna Kirchner, Kirchner's partner, to Hegemann, 24th of June. A tragedy had been quietly enacted here over the last few months. Because of the defamation in Germany and the failure of the November exhibition in Basel, he chose a radiantly beautiful day, 15th of June, to put an end to his life. I shall spare you the details. He had been suffering grievously until he was able, unable to make this decision. Influences and Legacy Today Kirchner has his rightful place in art history and is seen as both an innovative painter of his time, revolution expressionism, and documenting the changing landscape that was modern Germany in the pre-war period. <laughs>